Hey guys, welcome back to the Nitty Gritty Podcast. Today, we're going to discuss the big question a lot of people are asking. Should I renovate or should I just move? Why don't we get into it? Hey everyone, welcome back to the Nitty Gritty Podcast. Today, we're going to open up with our new studio here. And Matt, welcome to the new yes, podcast studio. Love it. Yeah. Look at it. New office, new studio. Alive, excited, full of energy. Let's get hey, into man, it. Hey man, I like it. Let's get into it. So hey man, I'm going to ask you a couple questions today. The basic theme today is the big question. Should you renovate your home yep. and get what you want? Yep. Or should you just move and save all the hassle of renovating? So one of the questions I want to ask you is, in your experience working with buyers, because mm -hmm. you work with a lot of buyers, yep. um, what are you hearing? You know, we know people are looking for like outdoor living space, and we know people are looking for like a home office. Um, some people are looking for like an exercise room or what they call a multifunctional room. Mm -hmm. um, I, I was looking for like a media room for my grandkids when they come in, in and stay over, right? Yeah. So tell me what you're starting to see, Matt. No, you're spot on. So I think since uh, COVID, people getting locked down, spending more time in their homes, yep. people have come to realize what they're lacking and what they're needing. You know, a home that was a three bedroom, two bath with a nice size yard was good for them then. And then when the world shut down and they ended up working from home and a lot of jobs have transferred to people staying working from home, they're missing uh, office space. They're, you know, maybe the yard isn't big enough and they want the kids to get out more. So top things that I'm seeing buyers want is um, more office space or a room for an internal office. So a fourth bedroom or even a den. Um, they're definitely wanting bigger backyards so they can entertain in a safe environment or have extra room for kids to play in. Um, I'm also seeing a lot of people getting away from wanting to do a two-story and get to a single story for particular reasons. They want to be more of an open floor plan. They want a, a bigger grand room so for more entertaining. So there's lots of things that people are looking to do. Um, myself, personally, in our family, we were kind of running out of room in our home. You know, uh -huh. we, had a, we had a beautiful home, um, but we realized we're going to have more people coming to stay with us. People are going to come and stay for extended periods of time. And also, you know, my wife works from home. I have the opportunity to work from home. So we wanted another office space. Okay. So we looked at renovating and we also looked at buying. If you have square footage, you, there's only so much you can do with it. Right. Right. You, you know, you're unless, limited. You're limited unless you're going to do a full addition to get that extra space, which may or may not be approved by the county, by the city, or even by the you know the the local restrictions. Mm -hmm. You can't necessarily make more space in a house, so okay. you got to get smart with that space. So I'm personally seeing a lot of people looking at moving versus renovating because they can't get more space under the roof. Okay, you know. So so let me ask that: uh, moving instead of renovating. Yeah. So are you starting to see? I mean, when you're moving, there's one or two things you can do. Yeah. You can either build or buy existing, right? Those mm -hmm. are really the only two things you can do, right? Yeah. So are you seeing more people gravitating to new build construction where they can literally design it themselves? Or are you seeing people moving to, look at new home prices with the appreciation rate, we got inflation going on, scarcity. Um, <clears throat> sometimes we're talking about supply chain issues. It's taken 12, 14, 16 months for a window. I mean, weeks for a window. Or are they saying, you know what, let's get this bigger house. And we've got these extra rooms now in this bigger house. We can renovate those rooms mm -hmm. and not have the delay that we would have on building. I mean, we're hearing stories of it taking a year to 18 months to build a new home. Yeah, we're going to be close. Our new house is going to be finished close on to a 13-month, 14-month window. From yeah. paper, you know, from spade in the ground to giving us the keys is about fourteen months. Yeah, so, um, I, I, so I, I would imagine that's a hindrance to some people. No, it absolutely is, and I guess the big thing is where are you coming from? Uh -huh. If you're renting a two bedroom or, or even owning a three bedroom and you need a four bedroom or a five bedroom, then mm -hmm. those are available. There are four and five bedroom properties out there that you could buy. Um, you know, that have been built 10, 15 years ago that will give you the space you need. Okay. But if you're already in a four bedroom or a five bedroom and now you need a six or seven bedroom because you need two home offices, 
as uh, you know, unless you have a very deep pocket or a checkbook, you possibly are not going to find an existing home for that. Now, builders at this point have listened to what the market's looking for, mm -hmm. have listened to feedback of people who've walked into a showroom and said, I love the house, but I wish it had an extra den or a flex room or an office. And they're starting to build homes with these additional flex rooms and offices. For instance, the home we've built, it already had five bedrooms, but we had the option to put on a 20 by 13 foot flex room above the garage. That's a great home office. So builders have got smart to what people are looking for, and they're starting to build and tailor their homes to give the functionality of what people want. So if you're starting at a three bedroom and you need a four bedroom, there's homes on the market for that. If you're in a four to five bedroom and you're needing six and seven rooms, then you're probably gonna to wanna to start looking at custom build or cookie cutter new build packages and see what the biggest packages they have. Hey everyone, we wanna interrupt this episode to let you know that we are a Keller Williams Southern Arizona franchise. Also, we are licensed realtors practicing equal housing. Now let's get you back to the podcast. Okay, well, that makes a lot of sense. So now let's say I, you know, I'm not going down the new build process because it's just gotten too expensive with the run-up in prices. I got to look for something yeah. existing, but you know, I'm, I don't know if I've got the money yeah. to do it, right? Yeah. Um, so prices have gotten away from me. So I'm still in my 1,500 square foot home, but I need two more bedrooms. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about where you could find the money to do the additions. Love this. So. A lot of people immediately think, look at my bank account, look at my savings account, talk with a contractor, this addition's gonna cost 15, 20, $30,000. Oh my Lord, where am I gonna get that from? Yeah. You're sitting on it, people. What do you mean? The home you own is a piggy bank for you. Okay. Like, if you've owned your home two, three, four, five years, let's just even say 10 years, and now you, you love the area, you love the school district or the location you're in, you don't wanna move, but you want that extra space, ask a realtor like me or like you, what's my home worth today? Okay. If they get a value of what their home is today, and let's just rough numbers, let's just say it's 350,000, but they only have a $100,000 mortgage left, like pull money out of the home you're in. If you love the home and you just wanna renovate it, pull the money out, speak to a realtor, connect with a lender, refinance or even do a home equity uh, line of credit, pull the equity out of your home to allow you to do what you want with the home. So many people think, well, I would love to put in a new kitchen, but that's $20,000. Mm -hmm. uh, well, you know what, let's put it on the calendar. For, let's do that in 2024 and we'll save up for it. Right. Have you spoke to somebody about how much equity is in your home? because you could leverage that today and get that kitchen done sooner rather than later. Because we don't know where the market's gonna be. The mar we don't know where the market's gonna be in 12, 24, three years time. What if, every what if the world implodes and, and values go down and you lose that equity? Then you do have to save for three to four years to yeah. get that kitchen. Yeah. You know, So people who are thinking about renovating, they love the home they're in, they just wanna do kitchen updates or maybe even wanna put a pool in or do something. Um, Talk to a realtor and see what the value is. See if you have equity in your home first before going and taking a, um, a loan at the bank or taking out a 26% APR credit card. You know, talk to a talk to a realtor first and see if the money's there in your home already. So if somebody's listening to this podcast and they're not in Tucson, Arizona, where we're at, give us a call. We have agents all over the United States that we can refer you two that could give you this information about the equity value within your home. Now, a lot of people don't think we have equity value, but there's over $35 trillion worth of it's, value it's nuts. in the United States right now in homes, but only $11 trillion of debt on it. So mm -hmm. that gives you like 24, 25 trillion dollars worth of equity out there. Yeah. So it's there. What you just need to do is reach across the aisle and talk to the real estate agent or talk to a lender to see what that equity is and then put it to use. And you may be better off doing it now because next year with appreciation prices in raw materials like we're starting to see, it may behoove you to act sooner rather than to act later, right? Yeah, no, absolutely. And what I would say, if anybody's thinking about renovating or about moving, it's still okay to have a conversation with a real estate professional. Yeah. Because if you're thinking about renovating or adding a pool or something like that, obviously you're gonna do your own little cost analysis of what's it gonna to cost to do our renovations. Right. Let's say those renovations are gonna be 50, 60, $100,000 for what you wanna do. 
is it worth, are you going to price yourself out of the market by spending that money on a home that you'll never get that money back if you sold it versus buying a home that has what you need and being having resale value down the road too. So whether it's a renovation, a large renovation or potential move, I think you should have a conversation with a realtor. They can give you what the home value of your home would be after the renovation versus is it a good investment to renovate this house or should we be looking at another or a new build? And that's this is what we do for a living. Yeah. I think a lot of people only see us of, I can only talk to a realtor if I'm thinking of actually selling or buying. Nobody thinks of asking us, well, could I just ask you a question? If I spend $35,000 on my kitchen, am I going to get that value back? Well, let's meet for coffee and talk about it. Absolutely. Like, that's what we're here for, people. We're not just here to buy and sell. We are here to guide and advise in the real estate market. Remodels, upgrades, additions, whatever it is, have a conversation with somebody. Hey, Matt, that's great information. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Absolutely. And, and everyone, um, this has been the Nitty Gritty Podcast. Please check in with us on our next podcast because we are going to do another question everybody's asking is, what does the future hold for home prices? Dun, dun, dun. Until then, stay safe, America. Hey, thank you for listening and watching the Nitty Gritty Podcast here with the Tom J. Krieger team. If you are thinking about buying a home, selling a home, or even investing in real estate, please reach out to us. We are local here in Tucson, Arizona, but we are also connected to over 4,000 agents across the US. So again, looking to buy, sell, or invest in your hometown, reach out to us and let us connect you.